By 884, the last remnants of the Viking invasion were repelled, and the defeated King Sif the Holy agreed to pay 300 ducats and surrender. This would bring great shame to him and to his religion, Esatru. He would later die at the hands of a challenger to his throne, who was inspired by this loss. In 887, Amadeus received news of the death of Jan, his friend and blacksmithing mentor in the town of his birth, Ambostadt. After this, he became a drunkard. Twenty years of conquest later, on the 15th of December 887, the Duchy of Bauern was deemed worthy to become a kingdom, and so the Volksreich was born. The taken symbol of this peasant kingdom was a yellow wyvern with a black fin and iron crown upon a red background, taking tincture inspiration from the von Bauer House sigil. This dragon, with its crown of iron instead of gold, represented the antithesis of the nobility. Many counts and dukes and kings fancied themselves as dragon slayers and adorned themselves in gold. The dragon of the Volksreich, instead of being weak and vain like the kings of the age, is strong and humble like the people who make up the kingdom. The Volkish army continued to press on and spill the blood of tyrants for the next several years, tried and untired by the invasion of Holdernesse. In 891, the people insisted on a coronation ceremony carried out by a Cathar priest, and so Amadeus obliged them. It turned out that the coronation was performed by a priestess, Sister Frida. A brief war postponed the ceremonies, but it was over within the year. On the 1st of January, 892, Amadeus von Bauer became King Amadeus von Bauer, brave father of the Volkish people. On the 14th of April, 893, the old nobles of conquered realms who were gracefully allowed to live in the Volksreich as equals formed an independence faction and began a revolt for the independence of the counties liberated from them. This was led by the former chieftain of Schlavestolp, Chief Bezprism. This revolt was in direct response to the coronation, which enraged them as Amadeus was of decidedly ignoble blood. This revolt lasted until 896, when in relative chaos, the revolt leader died during a broken siege of his. A separate revolt, stoked by the same anger and led by the chieftain of Barth, began in July, which was also put down soon thereafter. In 898, during the war for Nassau in the west, Slavyanska Vera zealots rose up in revolt, about 1200 strong. They ran into conflict with a band of Viking raiders and lost, so the revolt ended and the war with Nassau continued without interruption. As King Amadeus the Brave passed the age of 50, he became ever more obsessed with establishing the Cathar Church. On the 23rd of February, 902, he underwent the Consolamentum, the only sacrament among the Cathars, becoming a perfecti, which was a necessary title for establishing the Church of the Cathars. As a new zealous perfecti, King Amadeus the Brave set out to conquer Francique Leon, the closest holy site of the faith, upon which he would establish the Cathar Church. Tannist Heinrich died clutching his heart on the 28th of May 907, so his older brother Ivo became the new Tannist. In 907, King Amadeus the Brave caught word that his Viking neighbor, the Kingdom of Engern, planned an invasion for the year 909. Amadeus decided it should be ahead of schedule and stayed his troops from their holy mission to Leon to prepare for the invasion. Over the years, Amadeus von Bauer had dealt with near-constant scheming from former nobles who wished for the ruin of the Volksreich. They never got past the king, and so he dealt with them accordingly. He dispatched these oppressive aristocrats with ease in a myriad of ways, by balcony, sabotaged carriage, snakes, poisoned food, and archer volleys. On the odd occasion his involvement became public knowledge, his people knew that he was justified in his ruthless reprisal of intrigue. On the 4th of October, 907, as the powers of Europe began to see the Volksreich becoming more powerful and therefore more legitimate, the people clamored to become an empire. Nobody would oppose this move, surely. But when the head priest offered him a crown, King Amadeus, like a true perfecti, would deny himself the honor of being called Kaiser until there was a Cathar patriarch to coronate him. The people understood, and so his reign as king continued. On the 3rd of October, 908, the honored Queen Ermengarde, a perfecti and so right with the Lord, died as a result of pious self-deprivation at the age of 57. Her funeral was as grand as the crown would manage, and the people wept as they loved her. A stone on the site of her resistance would forevermore read, The blood spilled by a woman of obscure birth gave us everything. Hail be to the mother of our freedom. 
In March of 909, Viking raiders brought the disease of slow fever to the Volksreich. Following their plague, which preceded them, 21,000 Vikings from Engern surged across the western border in July. They ravaged all in their wake and made the capital of Schwarzburg their goal. What these 21,000 pagans saw waiting for them was 3,000 Volkish warriors and 20,000 mercenaries. The fighting was fierce, and just as it seemed the Volkish people would be broken, 3,000 more soldiers came charging down into the valley, outflanking the invading force. In January, Engern suffered a Catholic uprising and had to divert troops to that cause. Later that month, Tanist Ivo died clutching his heart at the age of 37, leaving Guta, Amadeus' already perfecti daughter and last surviving child, to become the Tanist. In March, the Viking king of Engern, Hraffin the Conqueror, was killed in battle by the 59-year-old Amadeus the Brave, who broke his skull with the handle of his blade. This caused the enemy to surrender, and Engern to break up into several duchies. In July of 912, King Amadeus began having fits in church, and the people believed him to be possessed. In October, he began heading out into the woods late at night, howling and returning covered in animal blood, and the people believed he had become a werewolf. In retrospect, some believe this had more to do with the lead-glazed pottery which was popular at the time. Regardless, the behavior of this 62-year-old king would terrify his enemies, making him even more effective in combat. Later that year, when a pagan of the Slavonsky Avera faith was brought before him, being threatened with death by burning at the stake, Amadeus refused, seeing that people once wanted to put people like himself to the stake, and that those times had ended in the new Cathar realm of the Volksreich. People were angry, especially the Cathar priests who worked hard to root out these pagans, but they obeyed their just peasant king regardless. By 915, the abused 64-year-old body of King Amadeus became infirm. Wars also became more and more difficult as the duchies the Volkish army had to pass through began to consolidate, bringing greater resistance and more obstacles on the journey to establishing the true church. This did not deter the desperate and zealous king, who simply became more rabid, pressing on at all costs. By 916, a single province separated him from the holy site that he carved a long, bloody corridor of territory through Central Europe to get to. By 918, that war was won, and the Volksreich held a border with Lyon. The county had grown to become a duchy with three counties, and was backed generously by Pope Martinus II, who they called the Saint, and other Catholic neighbors. They fielded an artificially inflated army of over 2,000 men, in hopes of preventing a Cathar church. They knew what was at stake, and so did King Amadeus the Brave. In July of 919, King Amadeus was offered exorcism by an old wandering priest. After a grueling process which left him with a bad fit of cholerics, he was cured of his possession and supposed lycanthropy. His illness passed with rest soon thereafter. In fact, this illness passed just in time for the war for Lyon. A 5,000-man army was raised and decimated the Catholics in the field. Suddenly, just as their first county was captured, a rival sect of heretics rose up to oppose the invading army, the Arians. This gave the Duchy of Lyon time to get back on their feet and stage a reprisal, forcing a peace treaty to be signed. Now, when King Amadeus the Brave can see with his own eyes the holy sight which he's been so desperately pursuing for so long, the 70-year-old must wait until the 10th of December, 9.30, to finally take it and found the church he's been fighting for all his life. Breaking the truce would cost him huge amounts of prestige and respect from other Christian rulers, and so his advisors cautioned him to stay his hand. In 922, Amadeus remembered his origins. He cared not for prestige, and that's not why he became king. He cared not for the opinions of other Christians, for they already hated him, calling him a heretic. This peace treaty, in effect, only meant something to those that he had overthrown. He showed Europe that he did not care for their opinion of him on the 10th of February 922, when he declared war on Lyon once more, shocking the rest of Europe and panicking the Catholics. On the 5th of May, Cathar holy leaders declared the Edict of the Albigensian Crusade, now opening up a new avenue for bringing salvation to the world in the form of holy wars, making this the first Albigensian Crusade. This first crusade, technically, predated the official founding of the church that declared it. On the 3rd of March 923, Leon was taken, 
and the Cathar holy site with it. That same day, the Albigensian church was formed and elected its first patriarch, Girja I. That same day, that old Amadeus the Brave kneeled before him at the holy site of St. John Baptiste and was crowned the first Kaiser of the Empire of the Volksreich. That day would be celebrated for centuries by the Volkish people as Bowers or Peasants Day, later to shorten to Bows Day. On the 2nd of March, 924, Kaiser Amadeus von Bauer, known as the Brave, died of pious self-deprivation at the age of 73, content and ready to pass on, having fulfilled his purpose from a lowly blacksmith to an emperor, founding the church of his people. His daughter, Kaiserine Gute von Bauer, would inherit the throne at the age of 48 to become the second Kaiser and first woman to rule the Volksreich. <laughs> 